So now let's take a look at our first example for convective heat transport, or uh, also in our study state, obviously, for this part of our uh, lecture. Right? So the first example that we're looking at is a forced convection. So by definition, forced convection means we have a flow around a geometrical shape or geometrical structure. And in this particular case, we have a flow inside a pipe. The flow goes in the pipe at 60 degree, goes out of the pipe at 40 degree, and the temperature of the pipe itself, which is the temperature at the wall of the flow, is 35 degree. So we wanted to calculate the uh, convective heat transport coefficient, H. Right, as we discussed in our lecture, H is calculated or is found through calculating the uh, dimensionless number, new sub number, and U. So for calculating new sub number, always the first couple of things is we need to determine what condition do we have. So we calculate our Reynolds number with this flow at 1.5 meters per second. Our Reynolds number is about 120,000. So we are safely in the range of turbulence. So we have turbulence, pipe flow that we need to figure out the new sub number. And once we know we have a turbulence flow in pipe, in a horizontal pipe for that matter, then we can find the inverse correlation to use to calculate new sub number. And this is the correlation that we are going to be using. And you notice that in this correlation, we have the ratio between the bulk viscosity and the wall viscosity. So which basically is the viscosity of the flow of material, flowing material, the bulk of the material, and the viscosity of the material close to the wall. And the main reason for that is that the temperature is different. So for the bulk, we use the average temperature for the flow. So entrance at 60, exit at 40, so the average temperature is 50 degrees. And at the wall, we have a temperature is 35 degrees. And for water, which is the material that we're looking at for this particular case, the viscosity is quite different because viscosity in this case is temperature dependent. And also if we're dealing with a non-Newtonian material like a power law, at the wall, which is at the center, the shear rate is different. So viscosity can be different as well. So, we need to take into account here is the influence of temperature and the non-Newtoniness on the material. And for this case, we have a Newtonian material, but the, temp the viscosity does depend on the temperature. So that we calculate the ratio here, and this will give us our new sub number 13 for new sub number. We also need to use our Pronto number. We need to calculate our Pronto number. And in both Reynolds number and Pronto number calculation, we use the bulk viscosity. Only in the new sub number calculation, we need to take into account the difference between bulk and the wall viscosity. So we figure out new sub number, and then by using the definition of new sub number, which is correlated to the convective heat transport coefficient H, then since we know NU on the left hand side, we know both the thermal conductivity and the characteristic dimension, so we can calculate H. And um, of course, for a horizontal pipe, the characteristic dimension is the diameter of the pipe here. So we calculate our uh, heat transport coefficient is 5,538. And once we figure this, we can now calculate the heat flow, the convective heat flow Q equals to H times the surface area times the temperature difference We will need to know the, the environment temperature, basically it's the air temperature surrounding the pipe, surface temperature is 35 degrees here, surface area is the outside surface area of the pipe, H is that. So if we know our environment temperature, we can calculate the heat flow. And that's how, in general, we solve convective heat transport problems.